Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have our next example how to use trig substitution to solve an integral. We have the square root of a squared minus x squared and now we have an x in the denominator as well divided by x. We still use the same trigonometric identity. We have the triangle here, we have the opposite side x, the hypotenuse a, and the adjacent side to the angle, the square root of a squared minus x squared. We use that relationship to make substitution to rewrite x in terms of the sine, the cosine, and theta there. Let's use this. The sine of theta, by definition, is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The opposite side is x and the hypotenuse is a, which means that x can be written as a times the sine of theta. Since we also have a dx in here, we can then say that dx d theta is equal to a times the cosine of theta, which means that dx can be written as a times the cosine of theta d theta. So we use this substitution and this substitution in our integral. Notice I have an identity here that we're going to need later and you'll see in just a moment why. That's not a common identity, most of us do not remember that, but we can write the tangent of a half a theta equal to the sine theta divided by 1 plus the cosine of theta. We'll see why we need that in just a moment. First we make the substitution. Here we say this is equal to the integral of the square root of a squared minus instead of x squared we write a squared times the sine squared of theta. A squared times the sine square of theta divided by x. Again, x can be written as a times the sine of theta and dx can be written as a times the cosine of theta d theta. Right away, this a cancels out with that a. In the numerator, we can rewrite this as the integral of, we can factor out an a times the square root of one minus the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta d theta divided by the sine of theta. And then 1 minus the sine square of theta can be written as the cosine square of theta, and we can put the, bring the a out. This is equal to a times the integral of the square root of the cosine square of theta times the cosine of theta d theta over the sine of theta. And then this, of course, could be written as the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta becomes the cosine square of theta. This is equal to a times the integral of the cosine square of theta d theta divided by the sine of theta. And now it comes down to, do we know how to integrate this? One of the tricks, there's different ways, but one of the tricks is to write this as a times the integral of 1 minus the sine square of theta times d theta divided by, and I need to make my integral sign a little bit bigger because this is also an integral sign divided by the sine of theta. If we now divide the denominator into the numerator, we get the following. This is equal to a times the integral of 1 over the sine of theta minus the sine squared divided by the sine is simply the sine of theta d theta. And this can be written as I come up here. This can be written as a times the integral of 1 over the sine is the cosecant of theta minus the sine of theta times d theta. And now we're ready to integrate. Of course, we do need to know what the integral of the cosecant of theta is. And this is equal to a times the integral of the cosecant of theta is the natural log of the sine, oh, not the sine, it's a natural log of the tangent of a half a theta, and that's where we need this identity here. It's the natural log of this minus the integral of the sine. Well, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so the integral of the sine is the negative cosine, and the negative times the negative makes it a plus the cosine of theta, and we still need a constant of integration. Now let's apply the identity here. We have this as an identity because we want to write it in terms of a single theta and therefore we end up with the sine and the cosine. This is equal to a times the natural log of the sine of theta divided by 1 plus the cosine of theta plus the cosine of theta plus a constant of integration. All we need to do now is replace back what the sine and the cosine are in terms of x and a. But we don't have a cosine there, so let's do this. 
the cosine of theta is equal by definition the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent side is the square root of a squared minus x squared, and the hypotenuse is equal to a. If we now replace the cosine and the sine by what they're equal to, so we can replace this and this right here, back in here, this becomes a times the natural log of. The sine of theta is, ooh, where we go here? The sine of theta, let me write it like this, the sine of theta is equal to x over a. That's, the, that's what I need to come up here. This is x divided by a divided by 1 plus the cosine of theta is equal to the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a. Okay, we'll probably have to simplify that in just a moment. Oop. And then we have plus the cosine of theta, which is the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a, and we still have that constant of integration. What can we do here? Well, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by a to get rid of the a's here. Let's do that. This is equal to a times the natural log of x divided by a plus the square root of a squared minus x squared. So what I did here was simply multiply the numerator and the denominator by a. We, give, we get this. And here, this can still be written as, well, the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a and plus a constant of integration. And if we write this in here, get rid of the brackets, this can now be written as a times the natural log of x divided by a plus the square root of a square minus x square. And this cancels out with that a plus the square root of a square plus, oh, not plus, minus x square and plus a constant of integration. And I believe that that would be the proper final answer for that particular integral. Again, it comes down to recognizing that I have an a squared minus x squared inside the radical, which lends itself to using this kind of relationship on the triangle for this kind of substitution of the sine and this kind of substitution for the cosine. And that's how we solve an integral like this.